This particular act was amended March 9, 1933, which specifically held that no person who is utilizing the provisions of this act as authorized by the President of the United States may be prosecuted in any court for reliance and or use of the act's provisions. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, the original Trading with the Enemy Act, a lot of people used to refer to the revisionary provisions of the act where reversionary, revisionary, doesn't matter. I'm tired, okay? I'm about to go lay down. It's been a long Wednesday, and it is the longest day of the week, and this video will be short. I have so much I want to talk to you guys about, but I can't because I don't have the energy right now. So you're just going to have to bear with me for video series, uh, the empowerment series for video number 26. That will be coming shortly. Uh, you have my word, but again, a lot of work and I'm only one person. So give me a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I will say this before we get started. There are people out there who are taking the information and going the extra mile with it, and I do appreciate that. They don't need to give me credit for the information <laughs> or for what they're talking about. I, I could care less. But the fact that they're educating people, there are quite a few of them out there that are showing you the law. Now, they're not technically, they're not quoting it correctly because they're, they don't understand statutory interpretation, but they're doing the best they can, and I give them credit for doing that. Okay. At least they're trying is what I'm saying. And so if you're being educated as a result of those type of individuals, then more power to them. Okay? Give me one second. Reversionary interest. Ladies and gentlemen, people are going to jail for writing promissory notes under this act. People are being denied access to the banks for utilizing eligible papers. Notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bank acceptances, trade acceptances. They can't pay their bills because... They don't want to accept it. They say that these are not acceptable forms of currency. That's a lie. And here is where the provision of the Trading with the Enemy Act, that's still in effect today, they changed it to 50 USC, blah, blah, blah. But hold on. I think it's 5003. So let's let him talk and tell me what is what, because he's always trying to correct me. I'll get her to talk to us because he, he wants to act a fool. No person shall be held liable. That's right there. For in any court, for or in respects to anything done or omitted in pursuance to any order, rule, or regulation made by the president under the authority of this act. Hey, pay attention. The authority of the act. Go and look at the Presidential Proclamation 2039, which is still extant. It's still there today. It has not been terminated. And because it hasn't been terminated, operate under the act, people. Operate with impunity! I apologize. I am just having that type of day. I wish I had focused on this a long time ago. People have been going to jail because they've been relying on this act and they haven't used this act. So hold on. Come here, young lady. Tell the us what's going on. The passage shared highlights important aspects of legal protection provided under specific wartime legislation, namely the Trading with the Enemy Act, as amended by the Emergency Banking Relief Act of 1933. These laws expanded presidential authority in times of war or national emergency, including the ability to regulate financial transactions and property held by foreign or enemy entities. Notably, the passage outlines that actions taken in compliance with the orders, rules, or regulations issued under this authority are protected from legal liability. This includes transactions involving the alien property custodian, a role created during World War I to manage and sometimes seize assets belonging to enemies or allies of enemies. The provision that no person shall be held liable in any court for or in respect to anything done or omitted in pursuance of any order, rule, or regulation made by the President under the authority of this Act is particularly significant. It underscores the legal immunity granted to individuals and entities acting under the directives issued in accordance with the Act. This immunity extends to transactions deemed necessary for national security and economic 
stability, reflecting the broad powers granted to the executive branch during periods of national emergency. The amendments of 1933, made in response to the banking crisis of that time, further expanded these powers and protections. The context was the Great Depression, a period of severe economic turmoil when such expanded executive powers were deemed necessary to stabilize the economy and protect national interests. In summary, the legal framework established by these acts and their amendments provided a mechanism for the government to control financial transactions and assets related to foreign nations or enemies during emergencies, while also offering... Hold on. Wait, watch this. Wake up. Wake up. You misspoke, comma, you claim that the act, comma, only applied to enemies of the United States and or agencies of the United States, period. You failed to highlight that the act also applies to, open quote, banking institutions, close quote, comma, which includes any person engaged in banking activities, question mark. You also forgot to highlight that the Senate Committee on Termination of National Emergencies have held that the National Emergency of March 6, 1933, declared by the President and continued by the Act of March 9, 1933, comma, is still extant. In fact, the United States Congress, from the Congressional Record of March the 9th, 1933, specifically highlighted that the act would remain in effect until the president declares that the national emergency is over or terminated, comma, which has yet to happen, period. So. When an individual operating in the capacity of a person engaged in banking business, comma, utilizes the provisions of the act, comma, they cannot be held liable in any court under any circumstances, according to the provisions of the act, period. The Committee on the Termination of National Emergencies of 1973 for the United States Senate ruled that there are 470 statutes enacted by Congress that affect the lives of Americans in a host of all-encompassing manners, comma, and that Congress gave to the President powers that are normally exercised by Congress, comma, and by such powers, the president could rule this country without normal constitutional processes, period. Which means that when a person is operating under the provisions of the act, comma, the 470 statutes may not be applied to them in any court, in any manner, because the law comma, open quote, the Trading with the Enemy Act, as amended, close quote, prohibits such, exclamation mark. Stop listening. Did you see what I just did? Because I just thought of it while I was doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, those 470 laws, every time they bring you to court, this is what you should be bringing up. You should be saying you have no jurisdiction or authority to be prosecuting me because I'm operating under the Trading with the Enemy Act as amended March 6, 1933 and March 9, 1933 by way of Presidential Proclamation 2039 and the March 9, 1933 Act as specified in the Congressional Record and the original Trading with the Enemy Act of October 6, 1917. So no, you don't have jurisdiction to prosecute me. You have no jurisdiction to be pulling me over. You have no jurisdiction to do anything because the Act says that I cannot be prosecuted in any court 
Praise the Lord. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he won't answer that question. So guess what I'm about to do? I said, I'm, I'm about to do something. I'm about to do something, y'all. You gonna do something? I'm about to do something. Look, section E of the act. That's what I'm about to do. Give me this. Copy. Lord have mercy. You see what I just did and I'm tired too. Can you imagine if I wasn't tired what I'd be capable of? Lord have mercy. Some of y'all ain't going to get it, but those of you who've been doing this for a while, y'all get exactly what I'm saying. And some of y'all going to take this to the hill and back. Okay? I'm going to tell y'all, do that. How you do that there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put this in the petition for the guys who are in jail and they violated their rights. I'm going to put this in that petition for writ of certiary. And we're going to go to the Supreme Court with this. Since they want to play games with us, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Trading with the Enemy Act. No person shall be held liable in any court for or in respects to anything done or omitted in pursuance to any order, rule, or regulation made by the president under the authority of this act. Any payment, conveyance, transfer, assignment, delivery. They want to foreclose on you. Tell them you're operating under this act. Tell them you're operating under the March 9, 1933 act. It's the Trade with the Enemy Act, and the president gave me the authority to do this. And you can't prosecute me in this court. You can't pursue a debt. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. It says it right here. Pay attention. We're going to read right here. May have come into the possession of any alien property custodian with like effect as if they, he or they, respectively, were duly appointed by the enemy, ally, enemy, or creditor, or obligee, the president shall issue every person who so appointed a certificate of appointment and authority of such person, and such certificate shall be received as evidence in all courts of the United States. Whether any such certificate authority shall be offered to any registrar clerk or other recorder office Federal or otherwise, within the United States, such officer shall record the same in like manner. The act itself is your registration, people, because the president gave you the authority to operate as a banking institution. Whew, man, they won't mess with me. They don't want to mess with me, y'all, because I'm tired. And this is what I do when I'm tired. Just imagine if I had this when I was awake. So I am trying to tell y'all. Do your research. Go back over the video. Go back over this section of the Trading with the Enemy Act. It's the Act of June, October 6, 1917, and the amendment was March 9, 1933. Go over paragraph E. Don't go over the U.S. Code. The U.S. Code is not law, people. Stop reading that junk. That junk is not law. Go over the statute at large. Okay? Go over the statute at large. Now, he's not going to like me, but I don't care. Watch this. I understand on, your girl. point regarding the applicability do you understand of my the point? trading with the enemy act. Do, do you understand made, now? Including uh -huh. its impact on banking institutions, banking institutions and the enduring and state of national emergency, state of national declared, emergency in declared in 1933. Enduring, y'all. This legal framework indeed uh -huh. stipulates that actions stipulates taken in accordance that actions with taken you are better believe it. Against liability in any court for anything done or committed in good faith under its Y'all will get a copy of this. The breadth of power granted to the president under this act, as emphasized, emphasized. by the 1973, 1973 Senate, Senate Committee on the Termination of National Emergency, reflect a significant delegation of congressional powers to the executive branch, to the executive branch during, during a state, state of national, national emergency, which still exists today. Furthermore, the acts furthermore, ensuring who is no furthermore? liability in court for actions no liability in court highlights for the legal actions. immunity granted to those acting with We got immunity my brothers and sisters individuals and entities engaged in banking activities deemed necessary or appropriate under the act We going to make this video to recognize the historical and legal context Shut up. in which these provisions It ain't historical operate. They still operate today. For the separation of powers and the exercise of emergency powers by the, the continual executive branch. Re relevance of the, the act and its amendment the act and its underscores, underscores the, the complexity of navigating legal navigating the legal responsibility and immunities, and immunities in the context of national emergencies. <laughs> and Ladies and gentlemen, empowerment series number twenty-eight at your feet. You talk about empowering people. 
And this one is 15 minutes long, ladies and gentlemen. So, yes, I'm a happy man. I'm a tired man. I'm an exhausted man. Uh, we did two consults yesterday. It was a very long day. I didn't finish until almost 9 o'clock, and I had been up since 3 that day. And today, no consults, but meetings today and working on documents. It took me five hours to work on one document for one person. Now, they appreciate the fact that I worked on it. Yes, 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 they paid me for that one because that one was five hours of my time. I told another gentleman to do the same thing, that he was going to pay me for working on his document. I created five documents for him. Do you know he balked and did not want to pay after I pretty much almost completed all the work? Told me no. Say they were going to go a different route. So when they lose their home, I'm not going to say a word. They will lose their home because he doesn't know how to respond to the court. Because he filed paperwork that I gave him. That's the problem with doing paperwork for people. That they can't respond. I'm going to have to respond. So what I do when I give you paperwork, I put your response in the paperwork. Your response is already there. I'm already responding for you in the document. All you got to do is just repeat what I've already written. That's how you respond to the stupid courts, but we'll talk about that. The video series, ladies and gentlemen, number 26 is going to be a series. 26 one, 26 two, 26 three. Okay, A, B, C. When you get that, you'll see that talks about the courts, gonna focus on the courts, especially small claims, your friend. But for right now, they changed the law in 1933. Did you not know they gave you immunity? I just pointed it out to you. All you got to do is go back over this video, read those sections, and you'll see you were given immunity. Now, that doesn't mean you can go out there and commit a crime because the act doesn't let you commit a crime. The act lets you do things financially. And when they block you from doing things financially, you get to take them to court. So go after their bond numbers. Go after their bond company. Do not sue them. Go after their bond, people. Go after the bond and use this to do so. I promise you, you're going to thank me later. No, you ain't, because most people who get information from me and they get some success, they don't thank me. But that's okay, I don't do this for that. Told you, the information doesn't come from me. I, I, look, I was on my way to sleep, and I came across this going through some old emails, and I focused on it, and I said, wait a minute, uh -uh, hold up, I forgot all about this, because this was from an email that was talking about the reversionary interest. Well, the problem is, the act doesn't say reversionary interest. The code spoke about reversionary interest. It used to be 12 USD 95 A and B. This is the section that was 12 USD 95 A and B. But I want you to go to the Trading with the Enemy Act and pull it. And it's going to be under Section E. Okay? Go to the Trading with the Enemy Act and pull it. All right. You guys are going to get a copy of this conversation. Now, this is Covington Law. Covington Law. You got to remember, if you don't have ChatGPT4, I don't know if it will let you access it. Okay, but I'm still going to give you guys the link. I got to go because I, I really am tired, okay? And I'm so tired that I probably won't even eat anything. Got to go.